All right, hello there, everybody. Hope this video finds everybody doing well and in good spirits. And uh, before we get to the shooting portion of this video, I'd just like to um, welcome aboard all the new subscribers. And I hope you'll give these videos a thumbs up and share them with your bestest of buds. Before we get into the shooting portion of this video, a couple of things I want to cover. First and foremost is if you have not seen it, go to the channel Times Gone Tech. Terry has been on a quest for coming up with a really good primer igniter for your percussion caps and also your primers for your cartridge bullets. And he believes, and after what he's demonstrated and talked about in that video, I believe the same thing. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, I hate that Primal. My first experience with that was with my Bursa Thunder 380, uh, reloading the primers. And like all of us will readily agree, the stuff is corrosive, it's dirty. And for me, I just, I've said it before, I hate this stuff. As far as percussion caps, primers, it works good. But why do we have to contend with that corrosive nature if somebody like Terry can come up with something much much more better that's why I've kind of been on a little bit of a quest trying to you know figure out a better way of reloading uh, percussion caps and that's why I've used the bang caps experimented with match heads and I'm going to be doing some more recording because I've had some had some more failures had some great successes but that's for videos throughout the course of the summer so if you haven't seen it time's gone tech he's going to be calling his formula formula to-24 and the m is for the magnum um according to him it's pretty easy to mix pretty easy to get the chemicals to do it and terry if you happen to watch this well here's a little thought why not put it in a little kit like primal and market it yourself Okay, now point number two. In this series of videos that I'm doing testing my homemade gunpowders, as explained in the very, very first video explaining the game and everything else, the guessing game, I have decided to drop a clue to the previous video. Now, in the previous video, I tested two gunpowders i gave you all the numbers you guys can do the math and figure out which one produced more feet per second as far as velocity is concerned and which one produced less you guys can figure that out it's pretty simple to do the math but here's the clue if you're going to play along and you're going to look for the answer the answer to the game number one the first round the clue is this you'll find your answers in the specific gravity of the charcoal. And I'll leave it at that. If you've been following along with this channel, there's been some charcoals that I did videos on as a revisit, a specific charcoal. So again, the clue to round one is you'll find your answer in the specific gravity. Now, at the end of everything, I'm, I'm making notes as I go along so that I can give you my opinions and my observations as to what these numbers are telling me as far as specific gunpowders that I've made throughout the course of last winter. So anyhow, uh, get the camera turned around. Actually, I'll wait for the day to get a little bit brighter about mid-morning and then um, we'll test my next series of gunpowders. And the next video after this one, I'll give you a clue to the gunpowders that I'm shooting in this video right here. Sixteen fifty seven. Fifteen 
15, 11. Sixteen ninety-eight. So just so that we all know, gunpowder I'm using right now, it's 80 grains by weight, but by volume, it's about 96, 97. So almost 100 grains by volume. Sixteen thirty four. That one's reading a duplicate, so I'm gonna keep it. Alrighty, while I clean the barrel for the next five shots, weigh the powder 80 grains by weight, enjoy the filler. All right, here's some more filler before I get to breaking up the last of my gunpowder that I made with the Spectracide stump remover. Um, previous video, I dip some paper in the water and I let it dry and it's fully dry and it's just as rigid as it was before I put it in the water nothing has changed and the same holds true with the cigarette paper okay it's just as strong so it's some good suggestions that maybe uh, using some potassium nitrate to help better burn the uh, papers as it pertains to paper cartridges. But I'm of the mind that if you're going to do that, it would probably be best to uh, use a spray bottle and spray them. Okay, same thing, 80 grains by weight, put in the measure, it's about 94, 95 or thereabouts. And it's just all loose powder, so I want everybody to recognize that, that I'm not settling it and topping it off. This is just all loose powder. So, let's get the first shot down, and then uh, we'll cut to another filler. In fact, enjoy the filler now. I'm out of priming powder. All right, for this next piece of filler, let's talk a little bit about the numbers game. Okay? And I want to focus a little bit on numbers and the male ego. Okay? Now, I know for some fellers out there, numbers means everything to them such as the standard deviation or or you know this feet per second or that feet per second however you want to try to qualify any of this now like I've said before I think in different terms okay so if I'm testing these gunpowders and I end up having a deviation of like 180 feet <sighs> Is that 180 feet really going to matter to me when I have an elk of a lifetime walking into my muzzleloader range? Are those numbers really going to mean anything to me if I'm walking through the woods and I see a really nice buck? 
I've seen videos out there where guys are setting up their chronographs and they're getting ready to shoot their their guns. Not so much muzzleloaders, but other fellers, different venues. And they'll pull out their device and they'll they'll look at the um, the barometric pressure. They'll see that the wind's coming out of the southwest by x you know x amount of miles per hour and and all this other stuff. <laughs> when you're ready to draw down on an elk, a deer, a bear, or even a wild hog, do those numbers mean anything to you? They don't me. You know, I it's to me shooting through a chronograph. And living your life by those numbers does nothing more than just feed the male eccentric ego. Because if I have to pull out a weapon for self-defense, I'm not going to be simultaneously pulling out a device and checking what the barometric pressure is. Or, or checking to see if Mars is lining up with Juniper just precisely. Those things are not going to enter your mind. They mean nothing at that moment in time. But, you know, doing what I'm doing here, it just gives you a good generalization. Okay? For instance, if I happen to go squirrel hunting and um, I'm not conscious about breaking any federal laws by taking my homemade gunpowder off my property then I might up my charge a little bit in my 36 caliber just to be able to get that little extra oomph because we all know that homemade gunpowder especially with what I'm doing with the 12 ton jack is a little bit weaker but once you know that once you can observe that through your chronograph you should be able to make a mental note Oh, that's right. When I'm going deer hunting, um, if I want to get 1,600 feet per second out of my flintlock, 1,600 feet plus, I better, you know, put 195 grains of your homemade gunpowder if you're going to take it off your property and break federal law. I have plenty of factory gunpowder, so I don't need to do that, but I'm speaking in what ifs. Okay. Another thing where I've seen the male ego play a big part into what people do and what people don't do and in particular at rendezvous over the years I've become acquainted with a lot of black powder shooters and a lot of those guys do not shoot paper targets. They, oh, I find it boring. There's nothing challenging in it. They come up with all kinds of excuses not to shoot paper targets. But yet when there's a trail walk and they happen to have a, you know, steel target out at 200 yards, maybe, you know, three by three, however big, they take aim, bang, ding! Yay! I hit the target! Yay! But it was at the lower corner of the target. That would have been an elk you'd have missed. That would have been a deer you'd have missed. Because you don't know what your gun's really doing at that distance unless you put it on paper. That's why for me, I like shooting both paper and steel targets. Because I, I know what my guns do. And, um, you know, and unfortunately, I've seen a lot of, the, a lot of that ego stuff um, cause grown men to miss out on good camaraderie. Okay. So that's another little filler piece that I wanted to put in right here. For me, these numbers mean nothing because they don't feed my ego. And as we go along in these tests, pay close attention because the fastest shot ends up being the first shot out of a clean barrel. And maybe I have to change the way I do things because I always like taking a fouling shot 
before I do any shooting at a rendezvous. Maybe I need to stop that because that's something that I learned years ago from Buck Skinners that I would dare say right now or maybe perhaps repeating bad or misinformation. Sixteen ninety nine. Fifteen ninety one. So you guys can tell I have my chronograph angled at a steep angle, as some might say, but that's to um, alleviate the shadow. So I'm still doing this at the same time of day, if that really matters, right? Sixteen fifty three. Just so you guys can see that there is a consistency, and this is how I always load my muzzle loaders. See how that's bouncing back up? That tells me that that ball and that powder charge are firmly seated. Gonna have to nap that just a little bit. Okay, so for this piece of filler, some of you might be wondering why I'm electing not to show you how clean or how dirty my patches are, or taking three or four shots and swabbing the barrel. Well, I want to do the five shot, clean the barrel, do the next five. Here's the thing, guys. A couple of years ago, when I was making different varieties of gunpowder say with my Barberry, with the Junipers, the two different types of Junipers, and I've since blended both of those. Um, my Cottonwood, um, the Choya Cactus, and whatever else I was experimenting with at the time. I already showed you two years ago how dirty a certain gunpowder is. Like my Cottonwood, like my Barberry. Over the years, I have consistently showed everybody that the best in burning gunpowder that I am producing with a 12-ton jack, no less, is the gunpowder I'm making out of juniper. And for all practical purposes, I'm sticking with that. All I'm doing now is just having fun, checking to see what different gunpowders are doing with different types of water and the different types of wood as they relate to specific gravity. Okay, so that's all I'm doing here. So for me, it's just a generalization of numbers. That's all it is. For those of you that might be new to flintlock shooting, my napping tool is just a piece of copper tubing 
probably about three quarter that I just flattened out and I hold my finger on the bottom side of the flint and I just flake off the edge. This works pretty good for me. Sixteen fifty five. Thirteen sixteen. That's one hell of a drop. I might just retake that. So since I have no more targets up there to aim at, I'm just going to let this one fly. Take the camera up there and show you guys. Um, I'm beginning to think that the uh, heat of the day or the sunlight is affecting this. See that? 1230. Even less. So I think what I'm going to do is to get that last shot. I'm going to take it off the tripod and let it set in the shade for about 10 minutes and maybe redo it. So while we're waiting for the electronics to cool down, just want to remind everybody what Paul Harrell says. We all know that chronographs don't agree. Elevation and ambient temperature affect the readings. Now, as you can see, there's no shadows across the sensors at all. So uh, I should get a good reading. It's been about six, seven minutes. Let the camera focus in, 1662. So I'm going to keep that number and attribute the lower numbers to the electronics getting hot. So you guys ready to take another guess? <laughs> all I can say is that as I test all of these homemade gunpowders that I made over the winter, some of them were pucked with a one inch die some of them were pucked with a two inch die. Some of them were pucked with an inch and five sixteenths inch die. And some of these gunpowders were made with different waters. My groundwater, my groundwater distilled and regular store bought distilled water. But you'll have to um, hang around until the very end to figure out or at least hear um, how I was doing these comparisons. And some of you guys might find this stuff um, a little puzzling or maybe not so puzzling. But I'm going to let you guys um, sit and ponder these things over. And when I do round three, I'll give you a little clue as to what I did in round two like I did in round one. You'll find your answer in the uh, specific gravity of the gunpowders. So for you numbers guru guys out there, you can see it's 1033 in the morning. Just get done completing round two. And I just kind of want to show you, I've um, had my door open to the shop this entire time. It's about uh, 72 degrees or so, but we're at 52% humidity. So, my excuse for a couple of those um, misfires or um, charges that didn't go off when I re-napped my flint, um, what I didn't show is that my pan um, was pretty moist. Um, so, I did re-nap the flint, but I also dried out the pan and I re-pricked uh, the charge. So, there again, for me, this is no big deal, no concern, just simply because when I'm going deer or elk hunting, the only shot that matters is that first shot. Doesn't matter what the temperature is, doesn't matter what the relative humidity is, all that matters is that that first shot goes off. 
So again, guys, thanks for watching. I've enjoyed doing this for you. I hope you'll take a moment, give it a thumbs up, and share this with your bestest of buds. <laughs> Bye.